everybody, Skyler here. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey everybody, Skyler here, and today I want to talk to you about the Quadriga CX Exchange and all the drama that's been going on around it. In fact, let me kind of just take a step back. I made a few videos over this. I'm going to just kind of start from the very beginning because some people may not know the whole story. I've been following it for a while, I'll continue to be following it, still hasn't been resolved yet, but uh, some interesting things have taken place. Uh, before I end up getting started though, uh, I would like to just let people know that I do make these videos every single day. So mostly every single day. So if you are interested in the space or interested in cryptocurrency at all, um, liking and subscribing isn't a bad idea. And every single like and subscribe does go to charity. I don't keep a, a penny that comes to this channel or anything under this name actually. So uh, every like and sub goes a very long way. So, uh, but let, let's get, let's get going. So, uh, so let me kind of start from the beginning. Um, a guy by the name of uh, Gerald Cotton, I believe was his name. He was the CEO of Quadrica CX. Uh, he ended up passing away, I believe it was November 9th of 2018 when he ended up passing away. And a couple months after, uh, the company ended up saying that they, when the owner died, he had all of the keys to the company's wallets, and so they were unable to pay back any creditors, any of their clients, anything. Now, this is huge on many different levels. So first of all, this was the largest cryptocurrency exchange in uh, Canada, so it was the largest in Canada at the time, and they were moving hundreds of millions of dollars throughout this exchange. So, November 9th, the owner, Gerald Cotton, ended up passing away, and about two months later ish, they ended up, um, two, three months later ish, the company ended up announcing that they lost um, all of the company's financials due to the fact that they were in cold wallets, which the owner owned only, and he passed away and he didn't give the keys to anybody. So Gerald Cotton, CEO, dies November 9th, 2018. Now, he didn't die from a car wreck, he didn't die randomly, he died from Crohn's disease. And if you know anything about Crohn's disease, you don't randomly just die and then they find out, oh, it was Crohn's disease. You normally find out you have Crohn's disease way before you pass away, which Gerald did. Um, so there's just a couple question marks. One, why did Gerald Cotton go? Okay, so he he also died in uh, in a different country. Um, he he left the country, um, left Canada, went to a different country to do some service project. He was opening up an orphanage, I believe, but he he did this while he was sick. Um, while he was deathly sick and he left by himself, no one went with him, and then he also uh, left while the company was in financial troubles. So the beginning of 2018, a lot of the Quadrica CX um, customers were complaining that they were not getting their withdrawals. Some people were saying it was taking two, three, four months. Some people were saying they never got them at all. And so you, you got, um, in the beginning of 2018, you started seeing this this exchange, you started seeing a bunch of red flags. At the end of 2018, the owner dies, and then a few months later, the company decides to announce that the owner had all of the keys. So like, first of all, why did the owner go on a, go on a charity, you know, why did he go uh, help the unfortunate while he was deathly ill? Why did his like wife and family, why did they let him go by himself? Well, like, I don't understand why he went by himself. And then when he was hospitalized, so he got so sick that he was hospitalized, then he was in the hospital for a while before he died. So he got hospitalized, and during that time where, where he probably knew he was gonna pass away, this whole experience, when he found out he had Crohn's disease, like when he went over there and then he got sick, we're supposed to believe that the entire time he just didn't give keys to anybody, which may have been the case, but I, I would assume that these people are more responsible and smarter than me. And I got a wallet as soon as I made a thousand bucks in Bitcoin. Uh, I can't imagine, then again, I'm not used to making hundreds of millions of dollars. Maybe these people that make hundreds of millions of dollars, they don't think about being responsible or whatnot, but it just seemed very strange that the CEO of a company who had hundreds of millions of dollars of other people's monies, who was deathly ill, decided he was not gonna give anybody else the keys to the wallets. No company should ever operate that way. There should be a system in place where if people died, the customers wouldn't get screwed over. So 
this just left a ton of question marks and people were thinking, well, did he really die? And then they found out he died in a place that was really, really well known for faking birth certificates and faking death certificates. So then people are like, well, he went to this random place by himself. Uh, the city that's known for faking death certificates did this death certificate, you know, not saying he faked his death. Like, I'm sure there's got to be a body, right? I'm sure the wife wouldn't just be like accept a death without a body. Like, I don't know if he actually, I don't know what took place. These are just very weird circumstances. So that led us up until a few days ago. A few days ago, we got some more information. So I am Nomad. He is a um, he's a person on Twitter. If you don't follow him, you should definitely follow him. Um, but he ended up finding out that this guy by the name of this guy by the name of Michael Patreon. Um, I'm probably butchering his name, but he is the uh, co-owner. So he he had he ran the company with Gerald. They had proof that he had at least eight million dollars. Um, let's see, we have reports from as early as May of 2018, all the way up until January 29th of 2019. There was $8 million or more being traded on a different exchange than the Canadian one from the co-owner of Quadrica CX. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, here's proof. Here's proof that he faked his death and proof that they're being manipulative and shady, I am definitely leaning that way too. I don't think this is all sunshine and things are just mistakes and oopsies. I don't think any of that nonsense is going on. I think there's something going on. That being said, I think people are jumping in a little bit. If that could have been eight million of his own dollars, who knew? But the fact that the company was struggling for money this entire time while this guy, the, while the co-owner of Quadrica has eight millions of dollars and he's day trading, what a lot of people are, so here's what a lot of people are thinking. In fact, uh, Brian Armstrong, he's a CEO of Coinbase, if you didn't know. Um, Coinbase's Brian Armstrong, he actually went on record. He said, Gerald Cotton reportedly died in early December 2018, but complaints about withdrawal issues on Quadrica ex escalated mid-2018, so maybe about a month of debate, January, December through January, management decided to cut their losses and release a statement claiming that the money was lost due to the CEO's death. So that's what a lot of people are thinking, that the CEO, uh, maybe he did die, and the company actually had the keys to the wallet, but they found an opportunity where they could steal $150 million from clients claiming that, the, uh, claiming that Gerald Cotton was the one that actually held the funds. Now, this is so messed up. Doesn't matter what way you look at it, this is a messed up story. There's no good solution to, to what's going on. There's no accidents, there's no mistakes. Somebody did something really stupid or really dishonest, really shady, manipulative. There's something going on here. And, um, and a lot of people are, are that way, are, th are thinking that way as too, too. So I think that's what happened. I think the company, I, that's where I stand right now. Obviously more information can make me think, but I'm thinking right now, yeah, the company found an opportunity where they could steal that money and blame it on the CEO's death and get away with it and that's what they're doing. Now the messed up thing about this is if that is the case that's happening, then Gerald Cotton's wife, she, she requested, she needed like a quarter million dollars because of all the funeral expenses and all the debt and all this stuff that, that Gerald Cotton left behind. So Gerald Cotton died. Now, if he did everything right and he was honest and he gave the company the keys a year before, like what, what I think probably happened, then his friends and his coworkers are saying, we don't care about his wife. We don't care about his family. We don't care about his reputation. We're gonna steal money from all of our customers and we're gonna blame it on Gerald and make him and his family suffer for it. I really hope that's not what's happening. But if that is ends up what's happening, uh, that's disgusting. So, I don't know. This is a re kind of a random crazy story and I don't really know what to think of it. And I will be staying on top of it. Any rumors, any, anything that comes out, I'll, I'll, I'll stay on top of it. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to post maybe way more videos. Sorry about, wow, my video is so dark right now. 
I, uh, I've been traveling a lot. Uh, I'm gonna be out of state for a week next week and um, I don't have many opportunities where I can actually be at my home in, the, in my little studio and, and record, so um, I'm on my way home right now in my car. I figured I'd, I'd shoot a little video. It's really dark right now, even though it's super bright outside. Um, the brightness probably is making it the video darker, but <coughs> anyways, all that being said, uh, super appreciate anyone who's watched um, and who has liked and subscribed and all that jazz. Uh, again, I make these videos every single day, every single like and sub um, definitely counts. Everything I make goes to charity, so I super appreciate anyone who has been watching so far. And yeah, I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Thanks. Bye.